Through the last 20 years of my career, time and time again, I've been confronted by new technology and business trends. There's always some hot topic, some new way of working, a new device or a new way of handling data that of course the business wants to adopt and security has to handle. And of course, it's natural here in 2024 that artificial intelligence, the big hot topic around the world, is a massive focus of security leaders. Now, there are different types of problems that I've observed over these 20 years, and they present different types of organizational challenges for security leaders preparing for them. There's the tame technology or business trend. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's easy, it could be really consequential work that requires a lot of investment. But by definition, it's fairly easy to predict the direction of travel of that technology and that trend. You know you're going from A to B and what outcomes you're trying to secure. You can lay out a roadmap for investment and the types of work that's required. And of course, you'll change the chart of, of direction a little bit as you move, but it's predictable. Then at the other end of the spectrum, you have the wild technology or business trend. That's one where it's really disruptive and it's hard to define what's going to happen next. It may be a lot of work, it may be a little bit of work, but the problem is you can't say where you need to be in a year or two years or even five years back when we really thought we could forecast technology trends. So how do you prepare by definition for a technology or business trend that is wild, something you can't plan for? Well, there are some lessons learned in ways that security leaders can think about these things. It doesn't matter with generative AI, predictive AI, and all its different incarnations, the various tools it's being embedded into, whether you're a cynic about its hallucination rate, or whether you're wildly impressed and think it's going to fundamentally change the nature of work, living, or even reality, who knows? Wherever you lie on that spectrum, I'm sure you agree it's going to be disruptive in general business and technology, and it's going to have a massive impact in cybersecurity. I could see, for example, incredible use cases in forensics, in incident response, in analysis, being able to ask questions, search for anomalies, look at large data sets, and to scale parts of the job that are time consuming from security analysts that are often in short supply. We've already seen significant demonstration of how AI, even its present version before it continues to enhance, is useful in the offensive space. In fact, with a lot of these new technologies and trends, things are often more useful in offensive, and over time, as structure and semantics build, they become more useful in the defensive space. That's not uncommon. So no matter how you kind of see AI playing out, important and disruptive in general technology and in cybersecurity is a likely outcome we need to plan for. It's going to be in the tool set of your teams. It's going to be in the tool set of your business. And we need to think about its utility in both, not just deploying policies for how people may use it with your sales force or finance data, but how is it going to change your SOC? How is it going to change the skills of the people that you need in that environment to be able to leverage it effectively? So given it's all uncertain, here are some things you could think about. Technology familiarization programs. Now, I've watched this play out a lot of times over the past 20 years. Take virtualization, for example. Big, hot topic trend in technology. We're all excited about it, and we're all looking around thinking, we need to get to know this technology. We need to understand how to deploy it. The problem is, most of our teams are running hot. They're busy. They're doing things day to day, and it's easy for things that are interesting and technological to not really be invested in by teams. It's actually quite possibly the case right now that there are more people in your sales and marketing team making extensive use of AI than there are people in your IT security and technology teams, because they're busy and thinking, I can catch up later. And of course, if it's everyone's job to learn a new technology, then lots of people end up assuming everyone else is doing the work and everyone's pointing fingers at everyone else and no one actually does it. Building technology familiarization programs to make sure people in your organization in the right pockets are actually learning this technology, they're growing their familiarity, will help. 
as the pathway towards AI value becomes more clear in cybersecurity or business, people having those skills already will more readily be able to catch the wave. They'll be able to move on to using that technology in a, in a SOC or whatever cybersecurity tool meaningfully implements it. Purposeful incentive programs to make sure use is occurring is a must. Don't leave it casual. The second one follows on from this first. As I said, a lot of teams are running at 100%. I spend a lot of time talking to security leaders and different organizations, and it's incredibly uncommon to find a team that isn't running at 100% let alone 105 or 110. All of us are under this pressure vice of business requirements, new technologies, threats, and major trends cramping down on security teams, which makes it possible to be 100% busy all of the time. There's always an event to investigate a new technology to look at. If you're serious about catching the AI wave, a wild technology problem you can't yet define, you want to start to build in capacity for your team. Now, that doesn't mean go and build a special squad of AI prompt engineers necessarily. By the way, isn't that interesting? Kind of a little while back, we thought prompt engineer was going to be a job, and now it's just a thing that people do in other jobs. That's changed under us already, fulfilling the kind of wild template I talked about. Think about remodeling your security team towards 85% building the capacity that when an interesting AI technology comes across, that killer use case in a new security tool you really want to embrace, you actually have some capacity ready and able to deploy after it. Don't scrabble for six months trying to hire people when it's time on this wild technology trend that is likely to quickly move. Proactively building capacity is a plan and a good one for a wild technology trend. Next, of course, you've got to do sensible policies for generative and predictive AI. I don't think I need to spend much time on this here for security leaders who mostly will have solved this problem already. How am I allowed to build models? What data am I allowed to share? Which AI tools are acceptable? Deploying end user awareness training that describes what you should and should not do with AI is of course going to be incredibly important but I'm assuming you're doing that already. Most organizations will have had to have solved these problems. And of course, this is about how to prepare for killer use cases of AI that may appear in cybersecurity, changing forensics and penetration testing, offensive or other security disciplines as well. So of course you need to do that stuff. But AI itself, encompassing all kinds of different technologies, at the end of the day is the use of statistics, of large language models, of machine learning, of data science. It's the ultimate kind of evolution and enhancement with computing power of things we've been doing for a very long time. A lot of the models date back 20, 30 years, but we've just combined them now with modern computing power and some novel enhancements. Some of your team ought to have expertise in data science, in machine learning and understand the power behind these technologies. It is fair that lots of AI may turn up in tools in your workplace packaged up, easy and ready to use. But like with any technology, if you have two or three people on the team that actually understand how this stuff works, they're going to much more quickly understand the benefits, the drawbacks, the limitations. They'll understand how to tune that technology to your environment because they'll understand a little bit more about how it works. That's one of the reasons I think at SANS, along with AI, we started to see a significant uptick in people understanding the data science and machine learning capabilities behind these tools, even though they're incredibly easy for the user to process. So make sure you're investing in the, the harder science behind these technologies. And that, combined with the spare capability in your security team, will enable you to rapidly adapt to whichever direction this technology trend should take. So I'm not offering you a roadmap for the best use of generative AI and predictive AI. I could probably spend half an hour telling you my predictions on which security tools will use it most and how it will be more beneficial to forensics versus EDR and similar. But actually, generically improving your team's readiness for this technology trend and doing it proactively is more useful. You should think about whether you want to be a leader, 
a fast follower, or a laggard and a slower adopter. But in any of those scenarios, generically shaping up the team with technology familiarization, suitable policies, the right capacity to be ready to run projects and to explore new technologies, and enough deep expertise to be able to understand how this stuff really works and its limitations is the framework we should use to proceed. And if I could give you one last freebie on the end here, making sure your people are spending time with other security practitioners, with other technologists, participating in hackathons, going to events, hearing how people are deploying these technologies and using them is a great way to be an early sensor for use cases that might be really impactful. Don't wait for vendor marketing promising 100% cybersecurity from AI to alert you to some potential new area. It'll be the folks on the ground, doing the job day to day, finding use cases for these within their tools where the greatest value is going to come from. So by listening to those use cases of other people deploying tools on the ground, using AI to solve real problems, you're gonna get the best picture of how to invest yourself in your business, what's most useful from those new capabilities of AI. You don't want to be waiting for the purported silver bullet kind of single mega use case from a vendor, from a marketing pitch, or turning up in the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal that AI has just solved. It'll be down the brass tacks of individual roles in cybersecurity where AI has a massive impact. And of course, AI, machine learning, data science, and all the encompassing technologies we lob under this one banner. I do think it can help in some incredibly important parts of the cybersecurity discipline, scaling the efforts of analysts and helping us solve hard problems to produce better risk management for our organizations. I hope this helps you prepare and I can't wait to see what you're going to do with AI as it develops and hopefully starts to tame.